All right, guys, we are talking biohacking beauty on the show today. My guest is Amate Eschel. I have seen him all over every biohacking event forever. We're always like, hi, and like, haven't ever been able to dive deep with him and what he's pulled together. But I knew it was something good because this guy, like, he asks the best questions when speakers, you know, I can tell he knows his stuff and he's been in this world for a minute. Um, he's held executive roles in the health, wellness, and beauty industry for over a decade and has been a business development consultant in that space. And he has gone fully into, with all of his vast knowledge of the human body and health optimization and biohacking, which you'll see in the show, he's definitely just wired that way. He's He's got a lot to share and does such a jo- good job sharing it. He went fully into like skincare, biohacking skincare, and he's really committed to excellence. Like what works going through the skin? What doesn't? Um, what ingredients actually make a difference? What do we not need to care about? What actually can be harmful in skincare products? And then what's going on in the inside of our body? Like we hear about the gut microbiome a lot with skin, right? But he's even talking about your metabolism, how that's impacting it, your blood sugar, what to look for, um, your HBA axis, which is like your stress system for lack of a better, you know, to keep it simple and how that's all impacting skin. Super cool. How your skin, what you're receiving from your skin on the outside is impacting your inner health, all of it. Very cool. So you guys are in for a treat. Um, if you want to learn more about his products, it's younggoose.com. We'll link that up. They've got a little quiz on there too. If you're not really sure what would be um, the most beneficial for you. And um, also he has a podcast he mentions at the end. It's called the uh, Biohacking Beauty Podcast. Yes, Biohacking Beauty Podcast. You can check that out if you want to get a little more into that realm. And just a quick reminder before we jump into the show, a few things coming up in my world that I would love to have you participate in. First is our hire retreat in Sedona. That's April 25th through 28th, 2024. It's going to be an incredible time. We've got Anahata Ananda teaching us breath work at her Shine Sedona studio. Um, If you're not familiar with her uh, and you are familiar with Aubrey Marcus, she was his first spiritual teacher, mentor, um, and I just fell in love with her. So I've had her on the show also. She's incredible and she will be taking us through her powerful breath work process out there. We're going to be doing some stargazing, some really dedicated activities to help you dive inside yourself, some fun, exhilarating activities, again, to help you dive inside yourself and see what's going on and also just have the time of your life. So I hope you'll join me. Um, You can just go to my website, taragarrison.com, and you'll see it right on the homepage to learn more about that. Um, Or you can do backslash retreats or forward slash retreats. And don't forget, I got my Coach Tara app. If you need, you know, an affordable option of getting my help with training, nutrition, biohacking mindset, um, check out taragarrison.com slash app. And of course, you know, I do my main job is one-on-one coaching. So you can check that out on my website as well. If you'd like some customized help with your health mindset, biohacking, all of that. All right. Are you done hearing me talk about my stuff? All right. Let's go ahead and get in the show. Here is Amate Ashell. All right, Amate, I've seen you cruising around all the biohacking events. And like I was saying, I'm fine. I'm finally getting to have a real conversation with you. And what a better way to do it than to let the audience in at the same time as I ask my million questions for you, because I find it awesome that you are very knowledgeable about the internal workings of the body. You're a true biohacker. You have an awesome background in this whole realm, you know, and then you've gone the skincare route. And like I said, you know, this podcast is inside out health. I'm obviously really big on the inner workings of the body and what that is producing in our, you know, physical appearance, our, you know, day to day physical reality. And you can same thing with our psychology, our mindset, all of that. It's Mm -hmm. what's happening inside reflects on the outside. And though, as biohackers, we know that our environment and the outside also impacts our internals. So, um, I thought we could start inside out talking about skincare and then our, the health of our skin, and then also hit on outside in and what we need to know. So definitely. I just want to say that obviously you're, um, anyone who's watching by video, not only audio audio and ever saw you, you're a living, uh, example for how like, uh, living the the correct lifestyle and, um, a, let's say, um, you know, a, a healthy inside out lifestyle can manifest itself in good skin health. So yeah, thanks. And I will say I used to have adult acne. I used to Mm -hmm. have a very, you know, typical standard American lifestyle. I'll put it that way. You know, every once Mm -hmm. in a while, you know, I'd run and run marathons and stuff like that, but it was very inconsistent. I ate terribly. 
I, you know, sleep was just a whatever happens, happens. And so I used to always have adult acne and I was like, what gives, you know, I was in this big victim mindset as I was with yeah. pretty much everything in my life. And so now it's been interesting as I've gotten healthier. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I, that used to happen. I forgot about that. Right. So can yeah. you speak to, well, go ahead with what you were going to say. Well, what I was saying is, uh, I think you're raising a point that is, I think, in a, in a philosophical level, is uh, probably one of the most important thing that people don't cover, which is that whatever is uh, optimal performance oriented isn't necessarily longevity oriented. Yeah, and there is th th that. Obviously, there there is a lot of congruence. It could be both, uh, but a lot of the times right. it's not. And if, and we can see professional athletes, we can see bodybuilders, um, uh, anyone who is super geared towards yeah. optimal performance at the moment, first mm -hmm. of all, it's not, um, it's not, uh, holistically healthy for the most part. So right. we can see, um, you know, ultra marathon runners with IBS, like it's, it's an extremely common sure. phenomenon. <laughs> Actually, the way I discovered peptides, you know, 15 years ago, I was trying to help my friend who's a um, champion triathlete deal with IBS. And I found BPC-157, which, which is a very important peptide. So I think this is a very um, important, important point to talk about mm -hmm. in general, that the mindset shouldn't be, oh, whatever is going to make me perform right now at my best, whether it is from the inside out or skin specific, isn't necessarily what is healthy for me holistically and long term. For sure. Yeah. Anytime you're going into any extreme, even with dietary extremes that are healing protocols, you know, if you stay in that extreme forever, I always say, while well, one thing's going up, another thing's going down. You're also likely to get inflammation and all these, um, you know, on inability to recover type things mm -hmm. happening on whether that's injury, whether that's your gut, whether that's your mental health, all of it. Um, and I think bodybuilders will be the first to tell you, I mean, I, I, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard a bodybuilder say, this isn't healthy. I'm aware this isn't <laughs> healthy. I'm not trying to like say that it is. I'm trying to win a show. Uh -huh. Right. Or, you know, and I think most people who go super, super extreme into hyper success in one area, they know, but most yeah. of them will admit this isn't exactly, you know, my life is not balanced in case you were wondering my life. It's not like I'm living some balanced lifestyle. So I think it is interesting to talk about because most people want to live a good life. They want to yeah. have good relationships. They want to feel good. They want to be able to move around and hike a mountain if they feel like it. They want to be able to sleep at night, you know, but sometimes there's this tendency as human beings to idolize somebody who like is super extreme in one area. I want to be like that. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, do you, or do you want to just live a good life and be healthy and thriving? Because they are likely, I mean, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but likely not uh, hyper performing in some of their other areas mm -hmm. of their life yeah. to make that sacrifice. So yeah. First you could, you could even, you know, you could even, uh, look at it as whatever, whatever's going good for us, uh, well for us, that's what we have at, at the top of our priorities, you know, consciously or subconsciously and vice right. versa. Like if your, I don't know, mental health, just cause you mentioned mental health isn't where it should be. It's probably just not prioritized and it can be just by your actions. It doesn't have to be, you know, in your perception. It's just like you're not, you know, meditating mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. challenging yourself in a way which improves you mentally. And by the way, there is a connection there between like mental and physical. In both areas, we do need diversity sure. and, um, and um, un yeah. you know, that balance between like something familiar and unfamiliar. And that, right. can, you know, aside from probably, <laughs> um, uh, I think, um, Aside from probably um, uh, skin microbiome, which is kind of the only thing that uh, we actually don't want diversity in, um, mm -hmm. everything else uh, from our gut microbiome to the way that we move, the way that we think, everything really, we diversity is key and not necessarily honing in on one thing and just dedicating our lives to it. That's probably not the way to achieve longevity and, and whatever that means. All right, let's shift over to that because that's an interesting statement. So why don't we want diversity in our skin microbiome? Well, um, as opposed to our gut, our skin microbiome um, depends on, uh, 
I mean, it's a very long conversation and it should be its own podcast. But uh, for the most part, um, our skin really wants the byproduct, what's called postbiotic, the byproduct of, uh, of microbiome, um, um, you know, metabolism. And for the most part, that is very hard to achieve with a, with a diverse microbiome in the skin. And mm -hmm. most microbiome that we can cultivate in our skin can have, um, negative effects when, you know, displacing some good bacteria, some good end products. So for the most part, we want to cultivate just a few strands that we know have really, really good postbiotics. If, um, for example, one of the companies that I have no, um, no, uh, affiliation with, but it's an amazing skincare company. If someone has like a really, uh, not optimal skin microbiome, it's called SIV Civ. Um, it's by the same guy that uh, started microbiome labs, Kiran. And, uh, this is an amazing company to introduce like this one bacteria to the skin that is fantastic and will basically propagate and eliminate every, all other bacteria. But we obviously know that um, in our gut, it, the story is completely different, right? You can't really thrive with one bacteria. You need a uh, diversity. What is it called? Siv? I didn't know he, yeah, this is so Quran made another company, Siv, mm -hmm. like yeah. SIV as in Victor. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. I'll check yeah. that out. Thanks. Really okay, good so company. Uh, really good. Uh, oh, I bet. Behind it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't do anything without <laughs> strong scientific backing and a lot uh -huh. of heart and a lot of intelligence and all the things. So cool. I'll check that out. And then let's talk about, let's go into, you know, you're kind of mentioning the microbiome. And when I see skin issues, I think like most of us, we immediately start thinking about the gut. Um, and yep. I notice that you talk about two aspects of our inner physiology that impact the skin that I find interesting, of course, the gut, but you also talk about metabolism, meta you know, all sorts of from HPA access to high blood sugar, you know, metabolic issues and how they impact the skin. And so I was wondering if you could talk, speak on both metabolic yeah. issues and gut issues and what that can result in in the skin that people might be experiencing. Yeah. So let's let's start with uh things that are that that you mentioned which are really um I would say like acute issues that we need to resolve which are more if we really think of that Venn diagram between like okay. optimal performance or let's say in the moment resolution and like long-term behavior. Um leaky gut for example would lead to a lot of the things that are immediate and we need to tackle now, which will be like eczema, psoriasis, um, uh, different type of autoimmune disorders that are holistic and, you know, propagate in the skin. Um, um, that is one area where the gut is extremely important. But when we talk about good, you know, when we talk about, for example, insulin resistance and just the abundance of, for example, um, IGF-1, or um, the abundance of anabolic, um, in, you know, factors that are running around, um, running amok in our body, it can propagate, it can kind of manifest things that are like, for example, skin tags, or increase glycation in the skin, which glycation means it's sugar molecules that attach to protein. And this is one of the hallmarks of aging per se. Uh, I mean, that's one of the things that we can characterize. We can measure its levels and we can say this affects your biological age. It's like um, it's it's a parameter for biological age. So glycation is dependent a lot on, on our ability to process sugar and take it out, out of our bloodstream. If it's if it's out there, you can even think about it like we think of free radicals, that they kind of need to attach to something in order to stabilize themselves. So uh, glycation or uh, AGEs, advanced glycation end products, are basically attaching to collagen, for example, in the skin and making our skin basically brittle. Think of, um, of um, rubber. And think of like supple rubber that you can move a lot and nothing is going to happen, right? Uh, like a tire in a car. We can drive mm. on tires for a while, but when the tires become old, they they crack, they have issues mm. that are not, they can't really be resolved by, you mm -hmm. know, by just pumping more air into them. It's a different mm -hmm. issue. So our skin, when it becomes brittle, it becomes thinner, it becomes less um, supple and able to bend. Then we develop more wrinkles. Obviously, uh, we develop 
other other issues like compromised skin uh, barrier. So glycation is a big driver mm. for what we would think of as skin aging. And so if that's yeah. a push, thanks for sharing that, because if that's a push for people to fix their high blood sugar, their blood sugar management is like, guess what? You're going to look way older if you don't address this. Sometimes that uh, little vanity entry point can be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to look like way older. Yeah. It's like, not to mention you're setting yourself up for every disease and your life quality is way lower than what it could yeah. be. But Hey, it's another entry point for people to think about is like, yeah. It's also going to age you like crazy, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And we didn't even talk about in the inflammatory part of it, which inflammation is general. Um, so just to, to kind of finish the, finish the discussion on glycation, for example, in every one of our, um, formulations, we try to address that as well. How do we, for example, you know, eliminate some of these AGEs, uh, from the area where we apply a product to. So that's a, that's a big issue that we're going to start seeing, by the way, not only with, with, uh, young goose, with, with the company that, that we started, but with many skin com companies in the future, it's going to be like, um, the same way that you're, that you're seeing any, in any like <laughs> YouTube biotomatologist, like any YouTube or, or, or Instagram post something about, you should wear your sunscreens in five, 10 years, it's going to be, oh, you need to use this product because it, you know, eliminates mm -hmm. some of the AGEs. So just, uh, you know, just think, mm -hmm. think of me when, when, when you see, uh, <laughs> someone talk about it on social media, um, within, within, uh, those, and, you know, uh, metabolic issues that we see, you know, manifest in the skin, inflammation probably is the, the biggest. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because we know that about 20% of skin aging is driven from the inside out. Okay. 80% is what we call extrinsic aging. Uh, and that's because we live in a very unnatural society. If we think of the food mm -hmm. that we're eating as unnatural, just think of the fact that we did not evolve to right. deal with EMF pollution, heavy metal, glyphosate, uh, you know, everything, plastics, uh, plastics oh, okay. blue light, by the way, that destroys your ability to create collagen and, and um, damages DNA, uh, you know, similar to how UV does it. Um, so we really did not evolve. By the way, we didn't even evolve to get out of our house at 2 p.m. after not seeing, you know, light all day and just get hit, bombarded with with right. high levels of UV. So all of those things together are like 80%. The 20% mm. is mainly driven by inflam aging, which is which is mm -hmm. inflammation that drives aging. Mm -hmm. And of course, inflammation is gen in general isn't great, but what happens in the skin is that our skin all that is getting damaged all the time. And that damage is characterized with inflammation. And what our body does normally is it treats the cause of inflammation. That's a cue for repair in the body. So even if we think about something like red light therapy and why we like doing that as a biohacking modality, the reason it is healthy for you for the most part is that it has uh, free radicals running around because of it, which signal inflammation. So just think of inflammation as a signal rather than something negative for my, for my point of view here. Mm -hmm. Now, when we have chronic inflammation due to gut, uh, gut permeability, due to the wrong things that we're eating, uh, some sensitivities, uh, allergies, things like that, even if we have, you know, uh, some damage caused by uh, free that by by heavy metals that are on our skin, mold. Um, uh, you rubbed your your skin the wrong way, whatever that is. It is drowned in a sea of inflammation, and your skin cannot really address that. So a lot of the times when you see people saying, "Oh, you know, I've tried this," even something like stem cells, I've tried like the best of the best, and it didn't work that great. It's mainly because you have every part of your body screaming, please treat me with it, with inflammation. So that is why inflammation is a big part, both from the inside out, but also obviously other, other factors from the environment are extremely unnatural and, and, and increase that as well. Wow. Interesting. Fascinating. I love hearing mm -hmm. that about the 80% and 20%. It makes you really think about more of your environment and what you're being exposed to, you know, yeah. that's, that's fascinating. Um, piece and of even, with, even within the 80%, by the way, in, if you live in, in, in a big city or relatively big city, 
more is more of your skin aging is driven by environmental aggressors rather than UV. So again, blue light, EMF, mm -hmm. pollution, heavy metals. Yeah, I always feel so like sad for people, honestly, when they're like working in one of those little tiny gas stations where it's just this little tiny room and it's like just UV light and all of this, like, you know, chemical storm and they're just mm -hmm. in there and it's nighttime. And I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I did or work in a hospitals. gas station when I was in college. So I've, I've been that person <laughs> and it's pretty brutal. <laughs> or, or, or in hospitals, you know, you mm -hmm. are bathed in EMF, like beyond belief, you have only artificial light around you, um, graveyard shifts, things that are incongruent with the way that right. we're supposed to live. So all of that is, I mean, <laughs> you know yeah it's and it's like i understand some people you know i talk to people who like they're not able yet to figure out a way to get out of that situation you know but just a little gentle push to keep your mind open if you are you know sh doing shift work and you're in this like no natural light fake light it's like you know, no pressure. I don't want to like you know, do the best you can with what you've got, but like really, you know, kind of opening your mind to possibilities to seeing as like, is there some way that I could shift this into a little better scenario? And if not, like, you know, um, a family member of mine, like she hasn't been able to figure out a way out of that kind of environment for work. And so she will spend the entire weekend out in nature. <laughs> she camps, yeah. you know, as much as she possibly can to try to like offset that. She's like, I just, She's like, I'm not really trying to be all healthy, Tara. Like I literally, my soul just craves it after being in there. And I'm like, bingo, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. and and I think these are the people that, um, you know, are becoming extra extraordinary at um, finding, finding alternative health modalities. So mm -hmm. anything from obviously, like if you do shift work and, and, mm -hmm. and you are, you know, pigeon held within a certain environment, you know, looking for those biohack or yes. biohacks or, or totally. things that are, that can change, you know, kind of the micro environment around you right. are extremely important. And I would right. say like the most important is actually temperature. Mm. Like most people don't know that, Light and temperature are probably the only thing that uh, affect our body across systems. So, mm. for just as an example, most um, if you think even about, I'm sure you've had some people talking about melatonin in your mm -hmm. in your in the podcast, and we know that melatonin acts completely differently in the gut and in the brain, like completely differently even though it's the same substance. And that happens a lot in the body. That's just ex mm -hmm. an example that people know. Uh, oxytocin is another one. So, uh, I mean, epinephrine, norepinephrine. So the, most hormones, more, most chemicals are really incongruent with um, whole body uh, communication. And when our body wants to communicate something across systems, it normally does it with, with you know exposure to light or with temperatures. Uh, we can think of the rising and lowering of temperatures throughout the day, when uh, throughout the menstrual cycle. So when we're trying to kind of hack the way that the, env you know, the environment to, in order to be healthy, we really want to be mindful, obviously, about light and the temperature that we nice. expose our body to. Yeah. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I got a, I got slammed with that when I moved out here to Hawaii about two months ago. <laughs> and most people don't have air conditioning here because <laughs> it's pretty nice year round. But the, the first two months I moved here are the hottest months and it'd be, you know, pushing 85 in my house mm -hmm. on the regular, definitely in the eighties. And, you know, I thought, okay, I can acclimate to this. I can acclimate to this. And as somebody who I fully admit, I don't, I haven't done anything to earn the amount of deep sleep. I'm just, I have always been wired that way, but I've always slept like the dead. Like I do not wake up for anything, you know, and I was waking up multiple times a night. I'm like waking up at two in the morning. I can't fall back asleep. Like yeah. I was like, okay, I got to get an air conditioner unit. So, I mean, even, you know, obviously I think most people know it impacts sleep, but that's a great thing to think about of like, because I, part of the reason I got it was like, I, I can't even I can't even think about thinking about work. Like I, my brain is not operating. Like I'm just laying on the floor, like in a daze, you know? So I've experienced how much temperature, especially when it's very different, you know, when it's all day 
chronically, like it, re- I experienced how much that impacted my, honestly, my entire reality, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I, thanks for sharing that. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about, um, HBA access and skin. Can you share about that a little bit and what wow. the HBA access is for people who haven't <laughs> heard of that? <laughs> okay. So, so your HBA access without like going too deep into the science aspect of it, it's basically your stress control or the stress relaying, uh, center of your brain. So if we talk about obviously from the inside out, and we think about our ability to um, control stress and, um, you know, and, and basically manage stress, we will do a, a, a service to our skin because stress hormones are notoriously aging. So if we think about cortisol, for example, which is a, the, the, the predominant stress or hormone that we are thinking of, um, what it, any stress hormone, really what it tells our body is, okay, we need to now um, kind of take all of the energy, all of the survival ability that we have and direct it to a certain area. And then we get back to the philosophical issue of we, we want to, we don't want to have every, everything in the let's solve something right now access, Mm -hmm. right? So just talking a little bit about what cortisol does, it increases MMPs, which MMPs are um, basically one of the things that really destroys collagen. Uh, they they basically cause an accumulation of like dead skin on your on the top of your skin um, because your body is releasing a lot of dead skin and it doesn't know how to like shed it fast enough. So it builds. Mm-hmm. So when we think about stress and acne, that is the main driver for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously stress in general is, um, not something that we, that is, um, conducive to detoxification. So that's just from the inside. So when we're stressed, we have less lymphatic, um, lymphatic movement. Uh, our muscles are less, um, supple and, and ebb and flow. They're more tight and it's difficult for the muscles who control our lymphatic system, control the way that we detoxify, uh, it's difficult for them to to create a a a a staccato that allows the pumping of of toxins away from from our from our extremities away from our from our skin etc that's just from the from the inside out and that again we can go very deep in, deep into that but there is another factor which we're starting to discover which is the interaction of our skin and the HPA axis. So Mm. what we call the skin brain connection. And if you think of your skin, it is really the first line of communication with the environment, obviously together with, with our, with our eyes. Um, We can really think of our eyes as a part of the brain. So we don't really look at it Mm -hmm. as, 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 as something that relays information to the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, But our skin is the first line that communicates stress. So stress, again, we think about UV. We think about different toxins. We we even think about touching and feeling something and obviously feeling the earth and um, with our feet. So this is something that is responsible for a lot of uh, communication with our brain. And what happens when we grow, grow older, we start to accumulate what I call rogue cells a lot of people call them um, zombie cells, and science calls them senescent cells. And um, that might sound familiar to some people because um, when we talk about like politicians who are really old or anything like that, sometimes we call them senescent. So senescent cells are just cells that are were supposed to die, and even the in, the kind of self destruct mechanism information isn't even available right now. So they're so they're so d- dysfunctional they can't even destroy themselves or or the body can't even destroy them. So there is like a default of getting into in jail basically, like growth arrest, and that's zombie cells, senescent cells. The reason they're called zombie cells or rogue cells it's because they actually infect other cells with they they send specific like inflammatory markers and they turn other cells to senescent cells uh they again diminish collagen they they diminish elasticity they make us look older they raise a protein called progerin in the skin 
So if anyone heard about the disease progeria that makes kids look very, very old, if anyone remembers like an old Robin Williams movie where he grew really old really fast, he shouldn't have grown, grown tall, by the way, <laughs> in reality, in the movie he did. But um, so they raise this pro-aging protein in the skin. And what they do as well is they start to bombard through that um, skin brain axis. So skin HPA axis, they start to bombard the HPA with inflammation and with stress. And what we're, we're starting to see here is, yeah, definitely, you know, our inside function ages our skin. But what we're starting to see is that our skin actually ages our brain and the rest of the body. Wow. So if we, yeah. And if we are not cognizant about eliminating senescent cells, we can do it with products, um, medications or, or supplements from the inside out. So things like rapamycin, metformin, uh, quercetin, um, there are brands like, uh, qualia that makes a senolytic supplement, um, or using products from the outside in. Um, that only treat obviously senescent senescent cells in the skin. So um, a one that you, that you can get prescribed is called TA65. It's a little bit of an older product, but that that was one of the things that it, it does. It does in a very mild level. That's not one of their claims, but it is it is good. And we actually took what what makes it so popular and we we adopted it into our products. Another good company is called One Skin. Uh, it is a very preliminary study. So everything that they do is still like they show it in Petri dishes, but it is promising, right? Uh, there is, you know, there is a very, 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 very big discrepancy between what works in a Petri dish and in, in humans. Um, and and that is one of the main research goals of uh, for us over the last five years. And and we we are the first company that ever came out with a product it's called ProCare. It's a uh, the only product in the world uh, that it has been shown to eliminate it in humans, eliminate senescent cells in humans, awesome. and and you. But you do need to remember that we are now talking about products that are more skewed towards longevity rather mm -hmm. than let's remove some wrinkles tomorrow. So you do need to blend it as a company that wants you to be motivated to use something day day in day out. We need to blend it with other ingredients that do provide you results tomorrow, or else you wouldn't use it for the five, 10 right. years that you should. Right. Yeah. And I can see why you're doing podcasts because there is like an education piece because people like me who are biohackers and really into optimization and the inner workings of the body and like microbiome and all that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. You can get those senescent cells. And it's like, yeah, that's going to just be like a long-term thing that you do for your skincare. But most people are like, look what happened in eight days, you know, from the infomercials and stuff, right. Is like what they're expecting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. okay. Let's, so th that's, so, uh, what was it called? Pro pro care. Pro care. Yeah, pro pro care. care. Okay. is like getting those zombie cells, those, uh, senescent uh -huh. cells. Okay. And then I'm sure you have a lot of crossover in your products, but I wanted to talk a little bit about NAD because, you mm -hmm. know, I feel like most people have heard of NAD. Maybe they went to like some IV drip place and paid like a thousand dollars. And then, you know, they were like, wait, yeah. I felt worse after. And I don't understand. I feel like NAD has kind of been like that. Like people are, there's a lot of confusion about NAD. And then especially in terms of, skincare, you know, uh, I think there is also a lot of confusion of like, well, that's cool. That's in your serum. Does that even do anything, mm -hmm. you know? And so can you talk about NAD and that yes. regard? So first of all, <laughs> first of all, um, NAD. So NAD is the currency for, um, about 600 processes in the body. And when I say currency is that on its own, it's not doing really anything. All right. It's not going to go and repair something. It's not like a retinol or vitamin C or anything like that, that I say, well, I'm going to put it there and I'm going to see results because of that ingredient. Right. It is like repair fuel. Right. And by the way, it's like a really yeah. raw form of fuel. Okay. You're, like your mm -hmm. body makes actual energy out of it. And that is, this is not really energy. If it makes sense, it's like 
I can't pour gasoline on the car and it's going to dry, right? It needs to burn it. And then there is energy out of it. Nice. So yeah. great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why, why today I have a lot of analogies about cars. Anyway, so um, <laughs> That so NAD as a whole, even if someone felt felt great afterwards or bad afterwards when they when they um, had the IV, the idea is affecting repair processes that are ongoing for a long time, and that's kind of the bad news because if someone paid a thousand dollars, they're not going to get anything from one time. They need to go and pay a thousand dollars, you know, every month, every couple of weeks, right. to really reap the benefits. Obviously, mm-hmm. there are now. Um, I think the uh, supplement company, uh, the supplement industry in NAD building blocks, precursors, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it crossed like 10 billion. So it's a huge industry just in supplements. Um, And obviously there is NAD now. There are like, I don't know, five, six companies that have NAD in their products and many Mm -hmm. more are researching it. And Mm -hmm. even Estee Lauder in 2019 said, hey, we're really researching NAD. Hmm. Now, the problem with NAD, that repair currency, and we really can think of, by the way, as as aging is the accumulation of unrepaired damage. So repair currency is very important. Repair fuel is very important. Unfortunately, by the time we're 60 years old, we have about half of the NAD that we had when we were 30. And how important is that repair energy, repair fuel? If I took it out of your body, you're dead in 30 seconds. So imagine what it means to take half of it out, right? And that's really the epitome of aging. Mm -hmm. Um, The bad news is that we can't really give the body NAD and the body will use it. So it's like um, NAD really exists or really used only inside a cell. So we need to find a way to raise it in cells. And that's why we're giving it building blocks, or I think of them as puzzle pieces. Mm-hmm. Imagine you have like a little hole and you mm-hmm. need to build, you know, uh, there there are these people who build like ships in a bottle or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can't get the ship there. You need to kind of build it inside, right? Mm-hmm. So the same thing with NAD, we need the precursors. We need the building blocks. The most effective ones that we know of to date are NR and NMN, uh, which are two building blocks. Uh, a lot of B vitamins, uh, uh, B3 vitamins like niacin, niacinamide are also good, but they're just not as effective. They're not clean fuel, if you would. They're like dirty fuel, fuel a little <laughs> bit. Um, so when within the, the skincare industry, exactly like collagen a few years ago, exactly like vitamin C, by the way, there are a lot of ingredients that they have a, a you know, a fantastic name attached to them but they don't actually do anything. And the same thing, by the way, with supplements, with NAD in skincare, NAD on its own is just a buzzword. It's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need the precursors. Uh, And for as far as I know, we're the only company that has those precursors in a nano sized form that absorbs into the skin that can penetrate, you know, they're smaller than a pore that can penetrate into the skin and then be transformed into NAD. Now you might ask me, well, if I have a thousand dollars, why shouldn't I just pay for an IV every week? You know, there's a viral video now of Hailey Bieber, Hailey, I don't know how to say her name, Hailey Bieber. And, um, and, uh, someone else that's very famous, like a Kardashian or whatever. And they are like, Oh, I love an 80. Why don't I just do it every day? So that's the question. Like if you're interested only in your skin, let's say, or only in your, uh, brain health, why should you, shouldn't you just do that every day? Or why shouldn't you just take supplements? And the reason is, is because your body has like a, like a list of what, what it, you know, organ is more important and it's going to allocate more NAD to that organ. So if you're interested in skin health specifically, that is very low down the organ list. And that is why we have to supplement uh, our skin specifically and where we want it specifically with NAD precursors. So you get it where you want it and it doesn't just go wherever it wants. Just to give you an idea, you take a supplement, 95% of the direct conversion into NAD is in the liver. So yeah. Nice. Excellent information. Thank you so much. And then yeah. um, let's hit, um, res- I'm just looking at your sign behind you here on the YouTube yeah. version of this podcast. So resveratrol, <laughs> what do you have on the bottom there under Synalytics? Um, let's see, we have peptides 
and okay. we have, um, yeah, and we have mitochondrial support. So by the way, like um, just um, we did talk about senolytics, but with resveratrol, which most people know, if if you know NAD is like a repair fuel especially for your DNA and your epigenetics, resveratrol is like a gas pedal. Nice. And unfortunately, uh, resveratrol is actually toxic for the skin. Hmm. So the skin doesn't have the ability to break it down, doesn't have the enzyme to break it down like your gut does. Hmm. Um, so it, it needs to, what you need to look for when you flip the, the bottle, either you look for enhanced resveratrol or you're looking for fermented resveratrol, which okay. are kind of pre-broken down resveratrols. Um, yeah. So, you know, Bert, um, uh, Paula's choice, uh, is a, is a, um, you know, kind of affordable brand that has uh, fermented resveratrol. And obviously if you want like, you know, top of the line, we have the uh, enhanced version, which is like 50 times more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. Um, mitochondrial support is our, (laughs) our new, our new uh, thing, okay? Um, we have been for the last like two years, we have been very involved in R and D of uh, yeast and its ability to enhance mitochondrial activity, improve mm. the ability of our mitochondria to utilize oxygen. Because mm. as we grow older, we can't utilize oxygen as well. It actually costs us more and more energy to create energy. So we use um, parts of yeast that um, basically allows yeast to create energy and we lend it to the mitochondria. And the first product we came out with, yeah, is called the hyperbaric mask. And (laughs) uh, the the first uh, version of it had only that kind of yeast uh, yeast isolate. And the reason we made it is for suboptimal people to get uh, skin rejuvenating results when they're in the hyperbaric chamber. Wow, cool. Because because you you if you go to a hyperbaric place and they're serious, they're going to screen you. If you're suboptimal, you're actually they are actually going to tell you you're going to get worse results from the hyperbarics. You're going to get sicker rather mm-hmm. than healthier. Nice. Because you're giving the the body an ability to create more energy, but it costs it so much energy, you're actually going to get worse. Mm. Um, and then it became extremely popular in those types of scenarios. So we invested ungodly amounts of money to, (laughs) uh, create a mask that is mimicking being in a hyperbaric chamber, um, as, as far as your skin is concerned and by by far, it's our, our number one seller just because it's uh, very easily used. And, and again, if we talk about something that gives you results right away, rather than long-term, that's one mm-hmm. of those products. Wow. Okay. Awesome. And then let's talk about peptides. How are you using peptides? Well, I think now there is like a resurgence of peptides. Peptides were very popular in skincare, I would say like 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And back then what people were trying to do is um, to chase the collagen craze. So like 20 years ago, we used to have collagen in every skin product mm-hmm. on the market. And then it became known that collagen is enormous as far as our skin is concerned. And it just doesn't penetrate, you know, 50 times the size of your pore. So it's not going to penetrate. Mm-hmm. So the first peptides people were trying to get into skincare are, uh, you know, are what we call um, building blocks of collagen. So basically like snippets of collagen, which we hoped the body would turn into collagen. It didn't work that well, but these were the first kind of um, canaries in the coal mines of peptides in the skin. Uh, And that kind of subsided because it didn't give great results to people. Within the last few years, we see what we use for the most part are what we call pro-peptides or pro-collagen peptides, which are peptides that make your body create more collagen. Hmm. Uh, so we can think of peptides as basically like computer codes. If, I, if I'm if i building a computer software, what I'm doing is I'm coding that software. So I'm writing a language which the computer refers to, right? So your body refers to peptides like these codes, like these um, action items that it needs to... to act on. So we can kind of figure out, uh, obviously in the last few years, 
it happens more and more where we can figure out what are the signals, what are the peptides that are used for specific signals. So if we think of probably the most, you know, um, popular peptide at the moment with athletes, also because it's legal as far as like um, uh, anti-doping uh, testing, it's BPC-157. And BPC-157, or it's also called the Wolverine peptide because it is used to help your body repair itself. But where does it come from? It comes from our gut. When our gut gets damaged, it expresses that peptide. So we can kind of hijack that signal, inject it into our you know, belly fat, and it's going to go where we have damage and signal repair. So you can hijack the same signal in the skin. That's one area. The other area are peptides that are in, in, in innate in the skin. For the most part, it's going to be GHKCU or copper peptide, which is fantastic. We're looking, what we are having problems with is that the there is a very, 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 uh, it's very difficult to have enough of it in a product to give you a signal for for repair, collagen production, et cetera, but not to saturate your receptors. So it's very, very, very difficult. So we're looking at ways to bypass that or to kind mm. of balance that out. And we think we've we've achieved it pretty well. We don't have a product that's out yet. The only area that we're confident that we can use GHKCU uh, or copper peptide in a efficacious way is around your eyes where the skin is thinner. It's a little, more, a little bit more reactive to that mm -hmm. signal. Um, but this is what we do as far as peptides. We're trying to hijack natural signals that the body makes rather than um, using exogenous um, right. stimulants. Um, we also use something cool that's not here, which is... Um, um, something that that I, I'm also thinking that in five, 10 years, is going to be like a hot topic that everyone is just going to recite is that we are actually avoid using the popular vitamin C, which is called L-ascorbic acid. And I believe, or we believe that it's one of the most toxic ingredients you can have, either wow. inside or out, by the way. It's genotoxic. It just damages DNA. So we're using like super, you know, super efficacious and and cool vitamin Cs that don't, that are not genotoxic. Nice. And, and I know that, that, you know, that's kind of uh, probably everyone heard about vitamin C. Everyone thinks right. they, they, they are they're fine with whatever they're using. But actually, that's one of the things that uh, behind the scenes we're most excited about, like finding ways to use vitamin C that is not genotoxic. Wow. And so yeah. it's just, you know, it just never ceases to surprise me. It's like, you know, you buy like the worst cottage cheese or yogurt from like the worst dairy where they just treat the animals like crap. And it just has a picture of like the little farm on it. And you're like, Oh, from fresh dairy or whatever. And then, you yeah. know, the same thing. It's like, Oh, vitamin C. And you're like, that's actually genotoxic. And nobody's uh -huh. going to tell you that nobody well, knows. And you're just like, look at me, I'm putting my awesome mm -hmm, vitamin C mm -hmm. on. <laughs> well, I will tell you that, um, there is more discrepancy in quality of ingredients in the uh, by the way, also supplement and mm -hmm. skincare fields mm -hmm. than there is between McDonald's and Whole Foods. Yeah. There yeah. is a larger, you know, BS factor. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I would even say, you know, criminal aspect of yeah. negligence there. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the inside loop and that, and I just always tell my clients, I'm like, okay, if you're looking at two products, let's say they're both like D3 with K2 and mm -hmm. one is $6 and one is $30. I promise you that the $30 guy is not the one who's ripping you off. Most likely mm -hmm. <laughs> there, I'm sure they would love to be more competitive with the six, $7 guy, but they actually made a good product that works that you can absorb, you know, and yeah. that is why they have to charge a little more. And so most of the time, of course, there are just those you know, scammers that somehow they were able to manipulate you into buying a crap product. But for the most yeah. part, you're getting what you pay for. Everyone's trying to be competitive. You know, it's not like anybody's like, oh, I'm just, 
I'm going to charge a hundred dollars when everyone else charges five for no reason, you know, like you kind of get what you pay for. And, you know, I know that with you guys, you guys are kind of like the skincare of biohackers, you know, I see you guys every single time. And so I was excited to see exactly what you had up your sleeve here because I knew it was good. I knew it was science backed. I knew it was high integrity and it's very cool to see that it is and to have a little more explanation behind what you guys have been doing. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, let's see. So younggoose.com, any last, you know, thoughts, recommendations? Uh, um, I mean, first of all, yeah, uh, you, you can, uh, reach out, you can take a quiz online. You can, uh, you, you can kind of find out what works for you. Uh, we play nice. So whatever you use until now is going to just be a better product because you also use our products in conjunction. So, uh, if you want to give us a chance, that's great. If you want to, get a, an extremely deep dive if you're if you're ready for a very very deep dive on the everything that we talked about right here and uh, a lot of other quirky you know skin related issues uh we do have a podcast that's like super skin biohacking oriented which is called nice. biohacking beauty uh which we definitely need to have you on like 100 we Thanks. need to have you on um <laughs> that's you can look for it wherever you listen to podcasts if you're listening to us right now you know where to find podcasts so biohacking okay. beauty podcast i can be we'll we'll link that up and then younggoose.com and yeah if you're not sure where to start you can just take the quiz they got you mm-hmm. there and then you can check out all their cool stuff it's really really incredible what you guys have put together so thank you for creating it and thank you for taking the time to come educate us today thank you very much